Anne, a provocative column from Peter Hitchens, but you strongly disagree with his sentiments. Well, look, I've got a lot of time for Peter Hitchens. He wages a wonderful war against drugs. He's one of the very few journalists uh, who do, uh, and I'm always grateful uh, for that. But I have to say that if this isn't a tongue-in-cheek article, then I think he's lost his marbles. It's uh, not. Uh, he's deadly he... serious, Anne. <laughs> I can hardly believe that he is deadly serious. I think he's being deadly provocative, which Peter Hitchens enjoys uh, doing. But, I mean, the idea that there would be any United Kingdom at all if England withdrew, uh, which is very much the major part of the United Kingdom, um, I think is very far-fetched. You've got to ask what would happen. You know, would Wales and Scotland still, and Northern Ireland still be a United Kingdom? Well, I think the answer is no. So he's not talking about England leaving the United Kingdom. He's talking about doing away with the United Kingdom, but doesn't quite want to say that. Uh, so uh, I think this is just a lot of nonsense. I really do. Why do you think the Scots voted against independence? Because they knew they couldn't do without us. Do you think there need to be more voices, Anne, like Peter today, though, standing up for England? Oh, I'm all for standing up for England, but I'm also a great believer in the United Kingdom. That is why I am so That's critical right. of Boris. Uh, over what is going on in Northern Ireland at the moment and, and in the deal that he signed, and he signed it, and, and, and uh, he was warned fairly uh, as to what would happen. I'm a great believer in the United Kingdom, um, and uh, we draw huge strength from each other, uh, and we do very well, and we are doing even better since we've left the EU. I don't think this is the moment to break up into small parts. No, indeed it's not. I guess, and those a lot of people in England start to get fed up when we get the constant abuse from the SNP, from Sturgeon, from Plaid Cymru, from Sinn Féin, uh, when we know how much we bankroll the economy of those nations. And, of course, we want them to remain part of the United Kingdom, but there's a certain lack of gratitude coming from the nationalist parties, and to say the least... To say the very least, there is, and I don't blame anybody for being fed up with it. I'm deeply fed up with it. You know, the idea, you know, that, that Scotland, uh, the SNP, abuses us, but they can't actually do without us, and they know that deep down. They really do actually know it, uh, and I get very frustrated indeed. I feel exactly the same uh, when we're abused by some members of the Commonwealth for our past history, and I think you know what we're doing in terms of uh, overseas development at the moment. Uh, so, yes, I do get uh, very cross about that, and, and I don't blame Peter for getting very cross about that, but the, the solution, for heaven's sake, um, is, is not just to break up the entire thing. I don't believe for one moment that Peter thinks it is. No, and I certainly don't think it is. I do wonder, though, Anne, if it will start to change the conversation when it comes to how we deal with Sturgeon's threats, because, of course, she used this trip this week uh, to Washington, D.C. I think it was a spectacular flop of a trip, actually, because it just saw the independence argument shatter into a million pieces when you've got major U.S. officials saying, hang on a moment, what are you talking about? You're undermining NATO in the middle of a European war. But putting that to one side, does there need to be more rhetoric coming from the government, which is, go ahead... Go ahead, Nicola. If you want to try it, try it, because it's going to end up bad for you. Well, I think um, Boris does not want another referendum. And if he just says, go ahead, try it, you know, he's effectively saying, well, try independence. Um, and I think that would be a profoundly irresponsible thing uh, to do. Um, and I think it is precisely because the Scots are ultimately responsible that they said no last time and would almost certainly say no again this time. Uh, but it doesn't matter how often people say no, that's the point. It's not going to convince Nicola Sturgeon. She uh, believes in fairyland, basically, you know, that, that this country, uh, which depends so heavily on us uh, for subsidies, uh, is, is somehow just going to be able to manage. And, of course, you know, what are they going to trade in? I mean, with the original proposals, the Bank of England said they wouldn't be able to trade in sterling because they didn't have the necessary backup. Uh, the Eurobank said um, it would be very doubtful they could trade in euros. What are they going to trade in? I mean, wee drams or something. You know, they, they just need to grow up. <laughs> yes, she does.
Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favorite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.